Hi everyone. In this video we are going to cover a very exciting feature that Microsoft's released in the November 2015 Power BI update uh, which is the ability to run R scripts from within Power BI. Now to be very clear um, uh, the release is uh, basically a beta release so there's bound to be a lot of changes probably by the time you see this video and possibly further updates from Microsoft. Uh, so again it's currently in beta looking very promising and I wanted to showcase some of the capabilities today. Uh, so in the video we are really going to uh, segment it into two chunks. So we are going to take a look at why. Uh, why would you even consider using R and Power BI together? And then we'll take a look at two demos. Uh, that's going to be really simple demos. So uh, one kind of like a hello world example really. And uh, the, the second demo is a bit more involved. So that's really the agenda for the video today. Uh, so first let's tackle why. Why would you want to use R and Power BI together? Now let's just face it, R is tremendous at uh, the visualization capabilities. R has built-in functionalities to provide great visualizations, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Um, R also works great with um, other JavaScript-based um, uh, frameworks um, and uh, libraries to provide that richness, if you will, uh, for interactive kind of like um, uh, analysis, uh, visual and uh, interactive analysis. Uh, so the question you're obviously thinking is, um, why would you want to use R and Power BI together? Uh, so while R has great visualization capabilities, um, one of the things that make Power BI uh, really stand out is that ability to create these very rich interactive dashboards and really share it with your colleagues. Uh, so that uh, that's, uh, uh, that's a clear reason why Power BI kind of like stands uh, apart from R itself. Uh, so in most cases R, you would use R as an example. Uh, you'd use uh, uh, for things like forecasting. Uh, say you want to use things like uh, predictive analytics, use machine learning, uh, do that data modeling, consume that data, and uh, let uh, Power BI kind of like provide that uh, visualization experience that you can mash together. That's the second reason that's really mashing data from R. So say for example you have some forecasting data from R and you wanted to merge that, uh, mash that together with other data sets like say from um, non-traditional um, uh, systems and big data systems like say Hadoop, HDFS or from Spark or even more traditional data sources like SQL backends or even CSV data. So it's mashing together data. And finally, going back to uh, the ability to share and consume that insights, Power BI gives you uh, native mobile applications and uh, that can um, it give great visibility um, uh, to your the hard work that you've done in R and present that in the hands of business leaders uh, through the native mobile application. Uh, so I, I think that's a killer feature and why you will want to look at uh, combining R and uh, Power BI. Uh, so if you haven't um, uh, played with Power BI or haven't seen Power BI, um, I'd recommend you go to powerbi.com and you can download Power BI for free. Um, so it's a great visualization tool. Um, I'm sure a lot of folks watching the video probably have used um, other visualization uh, self-service uh, solutions like Tableau and ClickView, for example. So Power BI is um, in a very, very related territory when it comes to that self-service style of BI. Um, so have a play with it, um, download it for free and you could get started. So now moving on to uh, the two demos. Um, so uh, while we go through the two demos, I'll highlight what are the current limitations or capabilities of uh, Power BI as it stands today. Um, so if you open Power BI, um, and this is that uh, initial page, um, click on get data. And so keep in mind, um, uh, when, when we are talking about using our uh, scripts from within Power BI, uh, keep in mind we are not talking about uh, Microsoft isn't replacing um, the, the built-in M language within Power BI. Um, it's really about using R as a data source. Uh, so you can see here, these are the list of data sources. And as of um, November 2015, uh, there's a new data source, uh, which is the R scripts. And as you can see, it's in beta um, currently as of today, uh, which can change in the future by the time you watch it. Uh, so let's um, let's try a simple example, uh, a hello world equivalent, if you will, uh, which will allow me to talk through some of the capabilities within uh, Power BI and R. 
Um, so one of the things you'll want to make sure is that um, it's uh, pointing to the right R version. Um, it automatically picks it up, but if it hasn't, uh, you will want to point it to uh, the version of R that you prefer, uh, particularly if you have multiple R versions installed. So let's just uh, take a simple example. Uh, so um, let's say um, um, I want to um, use R scripts and generate some data. So a prerequisite uh, in the current beta release is that it'll only support data frames. Uh, so if you have data in any other formats like vectors uh, and complex types, you will have to convert that into a data frame. So let's just write a hello world. Uh, nothing particularly useful, but uh, just demonstrating how um, the R script integration works. So I'm just going to create a data frame. So so I'm just uh, going to create some random numbers. Um, say X and Y and use that to create a data frame. So data frame one is equal to data data dot frame using X and Y. So that's it. So this is just like a, a you know super simplified hello world uh, so that we can see that in action. And now if we run the script uh, behind the scene, R is uh, I'm sorry, Power BI is connecting to R and it's actually it generated that data. So you can see that um, because I've returned a data frame um, or I've created a data frame, it's uh, showing that in the set of data sets. So if you had created other type of uh, objects in R uh, apart from data frame, it wouldn't have uh, pulled that into Power BI. So here you can see that this is um, uh, a data set that was uh, a data frame really that was produced from within our um, script and now we can pull that into Power BI. Um, so beyond this, it's uh, anything that you can do with Power BI, like visualize it and um, build dashboards, pretty much anything that you can do with Power BI, uh, you can now do that right here. So. As you can see, it's, uh, it, it really brings out the power, if you will, and the ability to, um, you know, to use the best of both worlds. So this again is like um, a toy program. It's really not um, um, a, a very useful set of functionality that we have created. It's after all just uh, random numbers. Uh, but as you can see here, it's um, uh, it allows us to. Um, you know, to really pull that, uh, um, you know, information or data from an R script and present that uh, inside of Power BI. So that's uh, kind of like the first example here. Uh, so again, the highlight being that you, you can only work with data frames or pull data frames uh, uh, from the R scripts and present that within Power BI. Let's, uh, let's take another example. Uh, and also, if you wanted to edit your R scripts again, uh, you can click on um, Edit Queries. Um, and um, here you can actually um, go here and edit your scripts uh, if you wanted to change that. Uh, so let's, uh, let's try a different example. Uh, so we'll create a new um, uh, R script. And this time around, uh, we'll do something a little more involved. Uh, so again, classic example or the best case example would be um, where you're using R to uh, do forecasting, uh, predictive analytics, and stuff that R is really, really powerful at. Uh, but um, uh, in, in the example today, I'm, I'm just going to use um, a rather simple uh, instance. So um, I've created another video. You, you may want to look at how I've used R to uh, do some screen scraping of uh, a job site. Uh, so for those of you who haven't seen that video, um, I won't dwell on that uh, uh, the use case for very long, but just highlighting that um, if I, um, you know, all the script is doing is it's actually going through this particular website, has a number of job listings, and I'm trying to extract the, the location. So essentially, I'm trying to analyze which uh, location around the world offers the most uh, jobs for our professional. So that's the background, but take a look at the other video, which has, um, which I've described the process in a lot more detail. So essentially, uh, this is the R script. Um, so the thing you'll want to keep in mind, uh, particularly when you're working with Power BI, is uh, to make sure that number one, of course, um, if you run the script from within R, it should work. Uh, make sure that if you are um, referencing any local resources, make sure that you put the absolute path, because uh, the path that you uh, relate a path that you put. Uh, from within R may not work from within Power BI. So right now I've already tested this um, and it's working fine uh, from within R. And now I can pretty much copy and paste that code right here. Um, so um, essentially it's um, a, you know 
calling 15 HTTP requests to uh, 15 different pages, um, and from the pages it's extracting uh, the location data and um, the resulting uh, content, it's um, creating a job location uh, data frame. So if I run the script now, um, it's of course gonna do that processing. Uh, one of the things you'll have to keep in mind is in the beta release, um, there's a timeout of uh, 30 minutes. Uh, so if your script doesn't f um, finish in 30 minutes, it's gonna time out and give you an error. Uh, so in this particular case, uh, my scripts um, didn't take that long. Um, so now if I click on load, so you, here you can see this was uh, um, the result of all the um, uh, job location extracts from 15 pages there. So I can now load that into Power BI. So again, this is really powerful. So you can see that I've um, I've run a script, uh, which uh, it, it could have been Python or it could have been even a third party tool that um, did that extraction and maybe it was a CSV. But in this case, you can see that, um, you know, uh, directly from within uh, Power BI, I can, um, you know, uh, run some R code there. Uh, so, Oh, okay, let me go ahead and um, make a few changes there. So, I want to change some of the columns. Um, call it something a little more descriptive. Um, so I'm gonna rename this and call that as location. Yeah, close and apply. All right, so now that changes have been made, um, I've, I, as you may recall, I've uh, changed the name of um, the column there, and now we can visualize it in different ways. So in this particular instance, I, uh, I'd i like to do a map overlay, for example, um, global map. Let's just resize that, oops, zoomed in a bit too much. Um, again, it's uh, just showcasing how, how easy it makes uh, uh, to analyze the data using um, a, a visual tool like Power BI. Um, so here we are showing the location and uh, in values, uh, let's just drop location again. Uh, so uh, immediately you can see that, um, you know, which particular countries, for example, um, and locations within the countries offer the most uh, jobs for our professionals. So you can see very visually um, how, um, you know, different regions perform. So of course, uh, in the United States, you have the most number of jobs, um, but in terms of uh, possibly highest density of um, job requests is uh, in the UK, um, you can see visually, you can actually uh, see that right there. So it's really about time to insight. I'm sure you, uh, within R and using various other libraries that work alongside R, you can produce similar dashboards, but uh, showing you how simple that experience is uh, using Power BI. So now that you have this data here, uh, of course you can build much richer dashboards. In this particular case, I've only got job locations. Perhaps uh, you have loaded other data sets here and um, you you can create rich dashboards. Um, in this particular instance, again, um, I don't have much uh, going on here, but um, you can imagine you could uh, produce um, really um, powerful uh, dashboards that allow you to uh, visually slice and dice that data um, in, to present much, um, you know, much more compelling and much more uh, interactive um, type of uh, dashboard. So as an example here, um, I'm creating a, a kind of like a slicer or a filter, if you will, um, so I can, uh, you know, uh, interact with that data in multiple ways. So for example, if I click on this, you can see it's uh, immediately presented like a, a very rich uh, interactive dashboard. So that's a wrap uh, for this video. So um, we've just scratched the surface, seen how you can run our scripts from within Power BI and do some great visualization. Of course, Power BI has uh, then the capability to uh, publish this uh, to the Power BI service, online service, and then uh, once you publish this uh, dashboard, you can then consume that. Uh, and also um, using uh, the personal gateway, you can schedule refreshes so that you have uh, close to real time or um, you know updated data. Uh, so hope this video has been helpful. Look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers, bye.